Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ve salatu ve selamu ala seyyidina Muhammed ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in. Welcome to our class. This is class number 8 of 12 classes for ITKI 6204, Sociology of Religion and Culture. Today is Sunday, December 4, 2022, and it is the October to December trimester 2022 for IKI Academy, which is hosting this course, the Institute of Knowledge Integration, and I am your instructor, Omar al -Fadib. Thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to a successful and productive learning experience. I have given you three assignments. Thank you for those who have already handed them in. Please let me know if you have any difficulty with fulfilling them. You have one more assignment, uh, and that will uh, complete the assignment requirement for this course. And then in addition to attendance, there is the research paper. And I have sent the details about the research paper to the Telegram group. In addition, we know that there are a variety of events occurring around the world. One of them is that the world population has currently reached 8 billion people. Uh, for some people, this is uh, irrelevant or not of concern, whereas for other people, there is a great uh, issue with the growth of the human population, which, according to some, is coming at the expense of the natural environment and which is leading to issues of friction and scarcity of resources uh, and difficulties with obtaining the necessary needs for having a successful and fruitful livelihood. So the fact that the world population is now 8 billion people is something that uh, affects many, many factors, including uh, religion and culture. Uh, every religious group has to manage its membership, its adherence, and every culture has to deal with the quantity and quality of people who belong to that culture. And sometimes there is a backlash when things occur, such as migration, because if a culture is overwhelmed with uh, huge numbers of people coming from other cultures, then there is a concern that the culture will be affected or distorted or diluted or even uh, wiped out. So we see how Native uh, American culture in North America was almost completely destroyed uh, as a result of uh, immigration from Europe uh, and the growth of the European population in North America. In addition uh, to the world population reaching 8 billion uh, people, we have uh, the ongoing uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine, uh, the protests in Iran, and in addition, there is the uh, World Cup, the football World Cup in Qatar. Qatar is the first Muslim country to host this worldwide event, which is one of the most watched events in human history. Billions of people around the world follow the World Cup, uh, and uh, there are some people who actually go and uh, see it live in the stadiums. And the fact that the World Cup is in Qatar has raised issues that may or may not be relevant to the World Cup, but these include controversies over the consumption of alcohol, the issue uh, over the fact that Qatar bans homosexuality, the wearing of solidarity armbands uh, that show uh, solidarity with the lesbian, gay, bisexual, LGBTQ community, uh, the fact that some uh, students... Uh, yes, Natalie. Sorry. 
sorry, Dr. Amar, just by mistake. Uh, it's like you're just listening. Uh, so some some attendees of the games uh, have decided to wear uh, Crusader outfits, uh, which led them to be banned from the stadium. Uh, and also the issue of the workers uh, who uh, were unfortunately, uh, who had died during the building of the uh, stadiums and the infrastructure for the uh, Qatar World Cup. Uh, and so, or the FIFA World Cup in Qatar, uh, which is a matter, or should ought to be a matter of concern uh, to all humanity, but particularly to Muslims, because it is almost uh, all of those who died uh, are Muslims, are people from Muslim nations like Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, and other countries. Uh, and unfortunately, we do not know how many of these Muslim workers died building the stadiums in Qatar and other parts of the infrastructure. And even those who did not die, they faced extremely harsh weather conditions and uh, very long hours and little to no uh, resting time and uh, substandard or terrible living conditions uh, and deny denial of their rights. Uh, one of which is uh, the companies that hire them take away their passport. And uh, the laws of Qatar and many other countries don't let them apply for other jobs or move to uh, other jobs. Uh, and so this is a matter uh, of concern. Now, at the same time, it is a matter of great uh, happiness and uh, it is uh, an honor for many people that uh, a Muslim country that is also an Arab country like Qatar was able to obtain the rights for hosting the FIFA World Cup. Uh, I urge everyone to follow along with current events and to relate it to the uh, questions and the issues we raise in our class. Uh, today we will talk about uh, Dr. Faha Awani, uh, specifically his idea of wasatiya, of uh, his notion of uh, balance. Uh, the word wasatiya in Arabic means middle path or uh, being uh, not going to any extreme uh, and uh, following a, uh, a balance. Uh, it was mentioned, it's mentioned in the Quran in one of the verses, ummatan wasatan, uh, the balanced uh, ummah as it is uh, sometimes translated or the middle path ummah. Uh, and the idea is uh, whenever we deal with any, any issue, uh, we try to find uh, the uh, solution that is optimal uh, and that uh, supports the Islamic notions of peace and harmony and love uh, and stability and respect and uh, the implementation of uh, uh, and uh, the following of uh, the rights for every human being, particularly those uh, in the Ummah, in the Muslim community, and also uh, trying to solve issues without uh, having to go to any uh, extreme, whether a complete rejection of Islamic principles or making uh, Islam into a very restrictive and uh, a, a very limited uh, type of religion. So when we deal with our heritage and culture, uh, we can uh, adopt one of many standpoints. And one is uh, some Muslims, they reject Islamic heritage and culture. They uh, might consider it outdated or irrelevant or of no use anymore. This is one extreme. Another extreme may be that uh, Islamic heritage and culture is interpreted in very restrictive ways uh, where uh, sometimes a notion uh, uh, like uh, forcing Muslims to live uh, a life uh, allegedly similar uh, exactly to the way desert Bedouins lived 1,400 years ago. Uh, this is also another extreme that is sometimes uh, implemented or there are attempts to implement it uh, by extremist groups. Uh, and that can include groups like the Taliban in Afghanistan, or Daesh, or ISIS in Iraq and Syria, or uh, Boko Haram in Nigeria, uh, and so on. So 
When Dr. Taha Alwani talks about the uh, middle path, Wasatiya, he's trying to address uh, the needs and the issues of the Muslim Ummah in a way that is a very much in conformity with the principles of the Quran uh, and the basic fundamental notions uh, that uh, were taught to us by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So we see some leaders in the Muslim uh, Ummah today, religious leaders, cultural leaders, uh, that promote tolerance, that promote understanding, that promote dialogue, that promote interaction, uh, that promote uh, love uh, and uh, peace and harmony. Whereas, unfortunately, even though they might be a minority, there are some leaders in the Muslim world that promote hatred and intolerance and rejectionism and exclusion and fear and violence uh, and force. Uh, and so these are unfortunately some of the issues that Muslims have to deal with and have been dealing with uh, and that have been causing uh, some uh, concern uh, and some difficulties for Muslim societies around the world. Now one question we can ask is where in the Muslim world is there more tolerance and openness and peacefulness and harmony, uh, and where is it less? Uh, and uh, the problem is that uh, the, the data is not always there, uh, or we end up being very selective. But uh, we can uh, make some highlights. So in the western part of the Muslim Ummah, let's say Morocco, there is a, a history of a tolerance and openness uh, and a harmony. But at the same time, uh, the government of Morocco has chosen to invade the Western Sahara and force it to be part of Morocco, uh, which is uh, a very sad war. Uh, it may or may not be similar to the Russian invasion of Ukraine, uh, but the results have been uh, very similar in terms of the loss of human life and suffering uh, and uh, the issue of the Western Sahara being its own country, has not yet uh, been realized. Uh, we may talk about Palestinian rights or Kashmiri rights uh, and uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, matter of uh, such entities becoming their own countries, yet this is being denied by a fellow Muslim country in Africa itself in the area called uh, Western Sahara. Uh, <clears throat> uh, now, if we move... Uh, southward and eastward uh, there is a, a very long uh, standing tradition of tolerance uh, in countries like uh, Nigeria and Mali and Niger uh, and uh, Mauritania uh, but at the same time we see that there are some groups in these countries uh, that are uh, extremely intolerant uh, and uh, have and are willing to kill others uh, whether Christians or people uh, from the community who disagree with them, uh, and this is uh, very concerning. Uh, and unfortunately, there has been uh, this has been used uh, as a justification for the intervention of foreign powers uh, such as France and the United States uh, militarily uh, in these parts of Africa uh, due to the instability and the uh, willingness of some groups uh, to become uh, intolerant and engage in uh, allegedly terrorist activities. Uh, you have uh, one of the most important Muslim countries in the world, uh, which is Egypt. Uh, Egypt has a huge population and an amazing history, and yet uh, during the Arab Spring it was able to overthrow its dictatorship. Now it has returned to dictatorship, uh, and there is a great deal of uh, intolerance that is returning, especially on the political level. And then we have the Gulf countries, which have various levels uh, of uh, tolerance and intolerance. Uh, the latest uh, I just uh, learned is that uh, there is a, um, a, a United Nations effort. Uh, it's not only in the United Nations, but uh, there is uh, one of the major efforts by the United Nations. Uh, it's called uh, the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women. Uh, in other words, an attempt uh, to have uh, countries respect uh, the rights to citizenship of women, uh, the right of women to own land, 
the right uh, of women to be free uh, from domestic violence, uh, the right of women to be free from uh, murder and so-called honor killings, uh, and uh, the prevention of the kidnapping uh, and uh, forcing of women into sex slavery and uh, other types of uh, horrible uh, conditions uh, and the uh, denial of women uh, to uh, be funded uh, by the government uh, where there is discrimination against women in uh, obtaining uh, projects uh, and support. Uh, and these are just some of the uh, issues that uh, involve a, uh, <clears throat> a bias against women uh, and a denial of women their fundamental rights. At the same time, you see countries like uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, which reject these efforts by the United Nations uh, and claim that the United Nations is going completely against uh, the Quran and Sunnah, which is a tragedy because on the one hand, the United Nations is trying to protect the rights of women. On the other hand, Saudi Arabia, in the name of Islam, uh, is saying uh, we reject these things and that the Quran rejects these efforts to uh, give women uh, their rights. Uh, and they, they misrepresent uh, the efforts of the United Nations uh, and they uh, claim uh, that uh, these efforts are uh, attempting to uh, uh, fight against Islam or, or deny Islam uh, when uh, this is a preposterous claim, uh, at least when you read the documents that are <coughs> being promoted by uh, the United Nations. Uh, and then as you get into uh, South Asia, there's a long tradition of uh, tolerance and respect of religions and cultures, although that has gone up and down. Uh, and Southeast Asia is the probably the most tolerant uh, part of the Muslim world. Uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, Brunei uh, have amazing traditions of uh, openness uh, and tolerance uh, and willingness uh, to have dialogue and respect and inclusiveness without losing their Islamic principles uh, and uh, without uh, uh, diluting their Islamic practice. Historically, however, it's also interesting to note when uh, Muslims were extremely tolerant and open-minded uh, and uh, supportive uh, of uh, the uh, ideas uh, uh, and, and civilization around them, not necessarily accepting everything, but engaging in friendship and dialogue. And we can see this in Andalusia, in Spain, uh, during the period of uh, Umayyad and Muslim rule uh, in Spain. Uh, we see this in the Mughal Empire, uh, in Asia, in the Mali Empire, in Africa, in the Ottoman Empire, in the Middle East. So we do have uh, some uh, incredible examples of great uh, tolerance and respect of religion and culture uh, throughout Muslim history. Uh, now, uh, when we talk about the, the current situation, uh, the modern world, we see uh, all, all kinds of uh, issues of increasing uh, negativity and uh, tendencies toward uh, violence and intolerance. Uh, and this, is, this shows up in violence against women, uh, violence against minorities, uh, violence against uh, sects within uh, the Muslim community, whether it is uh, anti-Shia or anti-Sunni uh, or other types of sectarian violence. Uh, and we also see different groups have differing opinions uh, about how to uh, implement uh, wasatiyah. And so there's a great uh, divergence in defining the middle path uh, and the correct path between, let's say, uh, groups that are labeled Wahhabi or Salafi groups that are labeled Sufi, Tablighi uh, Jama'at, Muslim Brotherhood. Each one has a whole set of uh, <clears throat> uh, ways in which they deal with the concept of wasatiya and the middle path. If we try to find solutions to what is best uh, for the Muslim Ummah in terms of obtaining uh, the best results, 
then uh, we had talked about uh, Al Farooqi, uh, Allah Hamu, who talked about reforming the social sciences and bringing the Islamic sciences and social sciences together. Uh, Dr. Faha uh, Jabal Alwani focused also on reform, particularly in terms of ijtihad, uh, reforming fiqh, Islamic jurisprudence, reforming the sharia, Islamic law, uh, and trying to come up with uh, solutions to our problems today using everything available to us from the knowledge we get from revelation and the knowledge we get from studying uh, the laws of our creator in this earth and among human societies. Um, Dr. Aywani also focused on the need to have uh, fatwas. Uh, a fatwa is a religious ruling. Uh, he was trying to promote uh, fatwas that are uh, based uh, on uh, using expertise from a variety of individuals. So in the past, uh, a single imam, usually it was a, ma a male, a man, who would give a fatwa. Uh, Dr. Alwani promoted a committee that would issue a fatwa. So people who have uh, various backgrounds and experiences, and they would debate and discuss among each other before issuing a joint uh, fatwa. And this is something that can help the Muslim community move forward in solving uh, the problems and issues that it faces. And furthermore, uh, Dr. Faha was also very emphatic uh, and trying to uh, indicate that uh, anybody trying to give a fatwa has to know the field uh, that they are talking about. So if it is a fatwa about uh, banking and finance, then the person needs to know economics, or at least issue the fatwa with fellow uh, Muslim economists. Uh, same thing when you issue fatwas about the family uh, or about education, then you need sociologists, Muslim sociologists who are familiar with these issues and can work together with the Islamic legal scholars. If it is a fatwa regarding politics, such as voting uh, or participation in the military, uh, then you need political scientists, uh, people who have expertise in international relations. Uh, so all of this uh, is critical in order to advance the Ummah forward, to have anybody issuing a fatwa to be knowledgeable about the field and to be uh, uh, willing to bring in uh, the best and brightest minds from the Muslim Ummah who have expertise in the fields uh, that uh, the fatwa involves. Uh, and we must also balance the ideas of the past with the ideas of the present. So Dr. Taha felt that uh, you cannot just uh, mention something that a scholar said 500 years ago or a thousand years ago uh, as if it is the final uh, answer to any question uh, and blindly follow this uh, scholar. We should respect the scholars of the past, learn from them, read them, uh, but at the same time, we can recognize that they were humans. Uh, they were subject to success and failure, being uh, correct or incorrect. Uh, and therefore, uh, their books, their writings, can be all, uh, should be uh, a part of the process, but only one part of the process, whereby uh, another uh, and just as important part of the process is to rely on those who are uh, knowledgeable today and who have studied the issues uh, of uh, the modern world uh, and who are uh, scientists in their fields uh, who are able to work with the religious scholars uh, to solve problems uh, by bringing together what was said in the past and what was uh, what is being discovered today of course always uh, beginning with the quran as the primary source document for any a religious or cultural uh, issue, uh, and then uh, the, uh, the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, and then the companions, and then uh, the writings of the scholars. So here I, I just wanted to present an overview of some of the ideas of Dr. Faha Alwani, especially with regard to wasatiya, uh, to the middle path, uh, to being balanced, and I hope everybody benefits from uh, what I have asked you to read. Uh, the uh, book uh, booklet I have uh, put previously on the Telegram list 
Uh, and uh, I would be happy to answer any questions. Uh, if anybody had any comments or thoughts at the moment, does anybody have anything they would like to add or uh, ask about? Okay. Yes, actually, um, yes. I I heard also the Patan University already, and they follow the the Vasatiya uh, idea, and uh, so. Well, actually, I'm so sorry. Nowadays, I have to uh, finish my correction. Uh, I was so late for graduation because of that. I couldn't uh, read the that book, uh, Doctor Alwani books. So um, I wonder: is actually the Vasatiya is meaning for uh, among the Muslims uh, to approach to. Uh, to yeah, follow the Vasatiya uh, aspect, uh, Vasatiya idea, or uh, toward another religion, uh, religion, religions. I don't know. I don't know very well. What is the that uh, main idea about the Vasatiya? Excellent, uh, Sister Zahra. Thank you for uh, those comments uh, and questions. Uh, so one way to answer your question is to say within uh, the Muslim Ummah within. Uh, the ideas uh, concerning religion and culture uh, that we find in Islamic history, there is the idea of wasatiya. Of course, uh, the Muslim community is not the only one uh, that has ideas regarding uh, being balanced and following the middle path. You find this throughout uh, religions and cultures uh, throughout history. Uh, so uh, we are trying to highlight the Muslim contribution to this idea and how Muslims have uh, been able to succeed and how, unfortunately, sometimes Muslims fail to fully implement the idea of Wasatiya. Uh, did anybody else? Thank you. Any other questions or thoughts or ideas? Good. Uh, so I will... Uh, let you uh, and encourage you to uh, focus on your research papers. I would like to see a draft of your research paper, uh, regardless of how short or how long or how little or how much you have written. Just send me whatever you have now. Uh, and then, uh, of course, the, the final uh, version of your research paper will be due on the last day of uh, our class, which will be 1 January 2023. That will be the last day of class, our 12th session. Um, we have to figure out if uh, 1 January is uh, going to be uh, something that uh, people will be uh, busy with or not. Uh, so I will let you know in the future. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, I look forward to your research papers. If there are any difficulties uh, or uh, obstacles, let me know from now. Uh, and uh, with that, I would like to wish you a great week. I look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, I hope last week uh, you were able to uh, benefit uh, from time with friends and families and working on your reading. Uh, and inshallah, in the coming weeks, we will wrap up our discussion of Dr. Faha uh, and then Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you very much. May Allah bless you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum salam. May Allah bless you, Ustaz. Thank you for good session. Salam.